Um, our next topic is going to be vessel monitoring, keeping an eye on you from Peter Braffitt at Gemico. Peter's one of our rock stars of the Yacht Engineering Seminar. He's been here all three times. We're very, very happy to have him. Peter's a general manager at Gemico Marine Accessories. He's well known across the marine industry as an expert in transducer selection and placement, as well as everything NMEA. His passion for cutting edge electronics and saltwater fishing fed his relentless drive to discover the latest advancements in marine electronics technology. With a manufacturing background as well as a deep understanding of boating and fishing, Peter's an invaluable resource in marine electronics installers, two marine electronics installers and boat builders of all sizes. Previous to the past 13 years at Gemico, Brad, Peter was a business develop management, development manager for Airmar Technology. Airmar is a transducer manufacturer that y'all are familiar with. Before that, he held positions in their manufacturing department. He's worked with many boat manufacturers to successfully integrate transducer installations into their assembly process. With nearly 25 years in the industry, he's well versed in the latest marine technology, boat products from bow to stern. Gemico Marine Accessories is a wholesale distributor to thousands of marine electronics dealers th throughout the USA and abroad, and a wholly owned subsidiary of Airmark Technology Corporation. You all remember that Peter, uh, in our first seminar, uh, gave us a presentation with uh, Ghost and Garmin and Airmar Transducers, and last year he brought us NMEA 2000. This year, Peter's here to talk to us about vessel monitoring. Thanks very much, Peter. can cover quite a few aspects. Um, it can be as simple as interfacing an engine and generator uh, with a, a modern multifunction display. Most of the MFDs now operate with an NMEA 2000 backbone into them. It can also be as complex as interfacing every single system in the ship. So it's controlled over a common network and uh, monitored over a common network as well. And really, it, we see that monitoring scales with the vessel size, but monitoring um, is usually dictated by the owner of the crew uh, the, on a new build. Typically, they want as much technology in there as they can. And vessel systems can be monitored and controlled both locally and remotely, um, very securely now. With all the IT um, capabilities out there, uh, we see a lot of people adding vessel monitoring to their vessels so they can monitor it off-site. You know, it's not um, something where the customer's at their boat every single day and they want to know what's going on, especially when they charter the vessel. So a few of the things um, vessel monitoring can do, it allows the alert or even prediction of a problem. So it's not just looking at that data real time, it's the ability to analyze the data that's happening on that boat and over time collect that data and make predictions about something as, as simple as a, you know, a pending failure for oil pressure, say watching an oil pressure curve over time, um, monitoring a lighting circuit and by monitoring the, the amperage requirements of that lighting circuit, they can tell when a bulb goes out because the amperage draw drops. So things like that are really um, you know, added benefits of monitoring. Combining monitoring and control also allows automation. So you know, I think beyond, once all these circuits are um, being monitored, in most cases they can be controlled very easily and combining the two of those can give some really um, neat value added options to that customer. For instance, rain detection can automatically close a hatch. Um, wind speed, uh, a preset threshold when the wind reaches X speed can automatically draw an awning in if nobody is on the vessel at that time. So there's a lot of safety uh, and convenience that can be added. Um, one of the common ones is fuel transfer where uh, the, the customer can set up, sometimes they want to manually trigger that to start but it'll automatically shut off at a preset, say, 95% full, the pumps can shut off. So instead of having to sit there and you know, stare at a sight glass or an LED display, um, it's very convenient. Situational awareness is also improved once you start monitoring systems on the boat. I've been on boats many times where the two mates, one's you know, looking at a sight glass, the other one's filling, and they're yelling back and forth to each other. Um, in a scenario like that where the, all the systems on the vessel are being monitored, it's very easy for them to have a smartphone with them and be able to watch real time a fuel tank filling up so they know at the point of entry you know, where that, what that condition is. There's also a lot of convenience for both the crew um, and the, the owner where lighting can be turned on and off, things can be automated um, where you know, boarding is more convenient when turning lighting on ahead of time or being able to uh, remotely turn the air conditioning to a, um, a lower temperature before you enter the vessel, before you get to the vessel. Turn an ice maker on in a sport fishing boat. So a lot of those can be done remotely once those systems are being controlled. 
And then, of course, as I mentioned early on, most owners um, are not on their boats all the time. Now, some have a full-time crew, of course, watching the boat, but there's a lot of cases in the sport fishing market especially where the customers operate the boat themselves. And they have no idea what's going on with that boat when they're a thousand miles away. So things like this, um, being able to monitor builds levels and report it to them as well as a dock master and five other people um, are really convenience factors, but also safety factors. A lot of peace of mind knowing exactly what your system's doing. So circuit control, vessel information become adaptable to basically any task. I mean, it's almost unlimited what people find uses for this. So the protocol that I'm going to mostly focus on today is NMEA 2000. It's one that I'm most familiar with, and it's also widely available. There's a lot of manufacturers that um, supply to NMEA 2000. There's many other protocols available, and I don't want to shortchange any of them because most of them are actually more powerful than NMEA 2000 in some capacity. But um, PLC systems are typically the most flexible uh, and the ability to completely customize every aspect of that vessel. So NMEA 2000 monitoring, there are so many, it's broadening all the time because it's an open protocol. Um, it's, manufacturers contribute to them. It seems like daily there's a new NMEA 2000 product coming out. Some of the advantages to NMEA 2000 are it's a single uh, cable connection. Um, the network cable includes power and data, so it's a, a five-prong connector. They plug it in, and that device now has both power and data available to it. So there's reduced labor costs compared to traditional wiring. There's not a home run for every single device. They can daisy chain on. If you want to add a device down the road, you add in a simple T, you plug the device in, it's got power, and it contributes its data. So it's very convenient in that aspect. Um, typically, there's a single user interface for monitoring and control of the vessel systems as well. Um, when you get into custom systems, the customer dictates all that and makes that one. But the nice thing about NMEA 2000 is because it's a standard, there's this sort of tried and true ways that manufacturers present that information. So it's very easy to, intuitive to walk on a vessel um, and even across brands of monitors be able to tell um, the type of data you're looking at and how to operate it. Um, it also has and the 2000 protocol has a lot of alerts built into it where um, oh, pressures and, and all sorts of uh, predefined parameters are set up in there, so there's less customization. So just real quick an overview, NMEA 2000, you're probably all familiar with that. It's just a real simple, um, it's a mil-spec cable and connector design. Um, they offer them in a small size and a larger size, which is um, unintuitively called micro for the small and mini for the larger. Um, really, the difference is just the current capacity. And as you can see from this list, I won't go through them one by one, but the things that can be monitored um, and controlled over NMEA 2000 are, are pretty broad. So the pros of NMEA 2000, broad range of sensors and vessel parameters. Um, Industry-wide sales volume of components. There's so many manufacturers building to NMEA 2000 specs now, it keeps the options high and the cost low. Um, it's also a standardized protocol. Um, one of the things that I really like about it is that it's worldwide. It's not um, a, a proprietary system has to be managed by that company. There's you know, any technician in the world is not going to be able to work on a, a bonding system or a palladium system. It's got to be a factory tech. With NMEA 2000, any uh, industry trained technician, which most installers are now NMEA 2000 trained, can service that vessel anywhere in the world. Of course, the cons, um, the PGNs, which is the parameter group list, those are the, the items that can be um, discovered over NMEA 2000, can be a little limited. Um, the user interfaces are limited. For instance, a Garmin MFD, they may not have uh, all the switching capability that you want. They may have engine data and many other things, but there could be things that aren't in there that the customer wants. And also, NMEA 2000 doesn't necessarily meet all class ratings. It's very important to know the class rating um, that the boat is, has to be built for before you install an NMEA 2000 system. So the most common parameter we see um, that customers want to start with vessel monitoring is engine monitoring. And there's a wide range of um, areas that are, are monitored and can be viewed over NMEA 2000. Gen sets is another one. Um, a lot of times gen sets don't necessarily have their own controls, so it's a real nice value added to be able to add NMEA 2000 and be able to monitor that gen set you know, across a, a, a helm display. 
So inboard engine monitoring is, is, as I said, probably one of the most common. There's very simple ways to take J1939 or Modbus or even analog and convert that over to NMEA 2000. There's a multitude of devices I mentioned early on that because NMEA 2000 is so adopted that many manufacturers contributing to that protocol now. So there's options for just about everything. Um, analog to NMEA 2000 is one of the things that we see the most of. It's sort of this mystery where the customer has a, you know, a early um, 70s trawler and they want to bring it up to modern technology. It's very, very simple to do. There's simple analog converters that pull right off of the existing gauges and senders and convert that over to NMEA PGNs that are recognizable by any display. So you could take that box in a couple hours, install it right behind the dash panel, um, attach right to the factory senders and gauges that are on the boat now, plug a Garmin or a Fruno or a Simrad display, and all of a sudden you've got that engine data over NMEA 2000. So it's a very simple way to do that. And that's one of the things that modernizes that helm almost immediately the customers feel, you know, it's, they've got a new boat. So I just did a, a brief overview here. There's a few adapters required for certain things. It's specific, uh, specific to the engine and the display, but very, very simple. And the interfaces for those, of course, as I mentioned early on, any common MFD that's been available for probably the last eight or 10 years um, has software available for it for engine data. They all display it in different ways, but very similar. Um, it'll auto-detect whether there's a single engine, a multiple engine. Some MFDs will give you gen set uh, parameters as well. So there's a lot of flexibility in how you can view that. And then there's dedicated engine monitoring displays. Um, the lower two here are from a company called uh, Oceanic Systems. They're just dedicated to engine display. It's all they show, so you could get rid of the old CAT displays or an analog gauge panel and replace it with a common uh, modern looking MFD that matches um, the other instrumentation on the vessel. Uh, Maritron up in the top, it's actually a, a computerized touch screen, it's very customizable. Um, where some of the other displays aren't as customizable, um, Maritron allows you to, to view that data any way you choose. There's also a smaller V3, which we see um, where somebody may want down in an engine room uh, a small amount of monitoring for a, an engine just to be able to look at pressures and stuff, and those, there's small displays for that as well. There's a lot of different interfaces. You can monitor the data over a PC, um, handheld devices, there's dedicated computers. It's almost endless now on the ways that you can view that data. If you have a, a phone in your pocket, you can have that data showing. This is an example of Maritron's um, software program, which they also put into their hardware, which is called N2K View, and it's very flexible. These gauges can literally be dragged and dropped. You can reassign. It's a very intuitive interface. And again, just some screenshots of the N2K View. Um, switching is capable uh, through this software program. Um, you can see status indicators here. You can bring in uh, images of the vessel and assign locations in there so you can see when circuits are turned on and off. And then, as I mentioned, they have a mobile app that ties into that whole system as well. There are other uh, vessel monitoring interfaces that are semi-custom. Um, this particular system here is, a, again, Oceanic Systems. They offer a vessel computer, but you can, for I think about $300 per page, they'll create any pages you want within here and as many pages as you want within the device. And that gives that sort of big boat custom feel, but still staying on the economy of an NMEA 2000 network. So I think that's a nice option to know that's out there. This is an example of some vessels that they've done. Um, you can see how high tech the graphics go. So to that, uh, to a, you know, a boater that looks like a completely custom system, but it's actually done very economically uh, without getting into a PLC based system. So it's still serviceable anywhere in the world, but the pages look very custom. So just some quick examples there of different data that's... Um, as I mentioned early on, remote. That's probably one of the biggest reasons that we see people adding vessel monitoring is that they want to see the, the data when they're off the boat, not necessarily on the boat. They can see the helm when they're on the boat, but they want to know what's going on with that boat, especially when the boat's chartered. Um, we've had, we had a case where an owner um, had a captain that was running his own little private charters on the side. Uh, and by monitoring that vessel, he was able to tell exactly what was going on with that boat. He could see all the tracks. So, you know, there's good reason that people would want to uh, view that data off the boat, not just for monitoring for safety, but just to know what the boat's doing. 
And again, there's a lot of different ways. You can be sitting in your office 3,000 miles away over the internet and just view anything you want on that boat. You can view the cameras. I mean, there's a lot of options. Uh, Maritron offers cloud services that actually put the data up to a cloud and you can view it over an internet connection so you don't have to have a dedicated device. Anything that has a web uh, browser in it can view the data on your boat. Just some quick examples. Um, actually, I'll back up on that one. This is kind of interesting is because you're monitoring that data and you're collecting that data, it can produce GPS tracks. As you can see, this is the track this vessel went. So again, on a charter, um, that's, a, that's a pretty handy tool to have access to. There's also uh, messaging where just simple text messages. Customer may not want to see the video or, or have any of that access on the boat, but they want the vessel to be able to send them a message if there's a problem. Um, and just simple text messages, you can also send a text message to the system and probe it. What is the oil pressure right now? And it'll return a message. Or what is the cabin air temperature right now? It'll return a message to you. So SMS messaging is becoming popular as well. So there's a lot of options for remote vessel monitoring. Um, as I mentioned early on, there's some web page based systems where um, maybe for fleet management, customer may want to be able to give access to a lot of different people. This is actually an example. We have um, an ultrasonic weather station product that we carry and um, it's actually manufactured by our parent company and we have location in Boston and we have one at our office in South Carolina, one in Oregon. And this one web page allows us to just toggle between those. So if customer um, owns a fleet of boats, three or four boats, they can monitor them all on a single web page and just be able to click through and see what they're doing. The system will also send alerts right from that web interface. Another example of the data that can be graphed. Um, cameras is another thing, not just having um, access to the, the data that's on the boat, but being able to see things real time is always handy, whether you're on or off the boat. And there's a lot of options for that now. Um, bandwidth prohibitive, of course, when you're offshore, but you can see here, this is um, N2K View Maritron software, where they actually combine the monitoring and the visual all on the same screen. So it's a really nice, nice setup. Now there's other um, brands of vessel monitoring, and again, I don't want to make light of the fact that these are extremely powerful. Enemy A2000, you are somewhat limited because it is an industry standard and the standard has some finite limitations. Um, this company's Voyager Maritime, Bonning, Palladium, CapTech, EMI, there's a lot of different ones out there. And um, the level of customization of these systems is, is unbelievable. I mean, you can really, anything you're, you can imagine they can accomplish. Um, just some quick screen examples. This is the um, Voyager Maritime system. And again, this is all custom pages, but it's very um, intuitive interfaces. There's a night mode. I mean, almost anything you can imagine, any look and feel they can create. Uh, Palladium Technologies, I believe they're here in Fort Lauderdale as well. They have a whole series of um, software and um, handheld products. These are some screen examples of the Palladium. This is a, a really intuitive interface and overview of the engines and it gives you all of your engine data all in one screen. So some very um, powerful tools and some very flexible ways to view that data as well. Uh, Bonning is another one, um, custom I think that um, Island Electric, uh, Island Marine here in Lauderdale represents Bonning and um, they have a lot of dedicated displays. One thing I really like about Bonning is they have a a very uh, common hardware interface as well. So the controllers, um, and as you saw in the previous screens, they really match the look of all of the displays. And um, there's some, I've got, I think, an installed shot here. It's just a really clean look. So it looks totally one-off and custom, but it's just a really great looking system, so. So I um, tried to make up a little bit of time there. Um, what did I miss? Did anybody have any questions along the way? Sure, there are a couple yes. of questions out yeah. here. Charles? So the NME, NMEA standard. Hang on, Charles. Let, let her bring the microphone. Okay. I'm going to hand it over to you. So I assume the purpose of the NMEA standard is to promote interoperability amongst multiple manufacturers. Correct. So, yeah. and you mentioned several times that it's pretty restrictive because it can't keep up with the manufacturer's advancements and all the specific features and benefits they come up with individually and separately. So if a product is NMEA standard, uh, 
is it interoperable with, among different brands? You know, for example, a Raymarine radar system and a Garmin MFD. Uh, is, are they standard at a basic level, but you have to keep your system, your boat all Garmin or all Raymarine to get all the features and benefits, or are they not compatible at all in general? Or, well, that's a great question, actually. The, the radar, the fish finder, the autopilot typically are not built to an enemy A2000 standard. The, the manufacturers want to hold that near and dear, and they don't want to share that. So a Raymarine radar is not going to communicate with a, a Navico or Simrad system. The enemy A2000 level is more monitoring vessel parameters. It's, it's going to be monitoring engine data and temperatures and turning lighting switches, um, you know, uh, controlling AC and DC circuits. And I, I might have sort of overstated the fact that enemy A2000 is limited. Enemy A2000 is extremely broad. It's just that there are certain things that um, there's not a PGN, for instance, to control window shades in a vessel, turn, you know, put them up and down. There's ways to do it. But what happens is you would take a DC switching circuit and you'd have it to turn, you know, move shades up and down, but you wouldn't be able to see that as, you know, shade position X on, a, on an overlay because that's not built into the standard. When you get into the PLC systems, those are very customizable. They can take, in a custom system, they can take a Garmin radar and a Fruno fish finder and a Simrad autopilot and tie them all together into one cohesive system. So they're using video and, and stuff in the background to do that. So when, when I mentioned the NMA 2000 standard, it's only limited because it's growing all the time. I was at um, the Lauderdale show last year and there was a big meeting there, another one at Miami because underwater lighting is becoming popular. They want to control it over NMA 2000. There's a whole list of standards on their way for that. So it's getting broader all the time, but I just like to let people know that it's not all inclusive. There are things like that window shade I mentioned, um, opening a door and seeing the position of whether the door is open or closed isn't necessarily part of the standard at this time. But the customization has to be done by a, another software company, manager or managers, right? Yes, one, yeah. once you get past the standard NMEA 2000, now there's a lot of companies that will take NMEA 2000 and tie it into a custom system and, and put it all together. But an off-the-shelf system, a simple system of NMEA 2000, there are some limitations. Okay, and um, yeah, there's, beyond that, there's, that's when you bring in a third-party integrator, so. Do you have any other questions? Everybody's pretty satisfied. We've come an awful long way from a, a compass, an RDF, and a handheld bilge yes. pump. So, <laughs> thanks very much, Peter. Right, thanks. Excellent presentation. Thank you. Excellent.